Hello, hello, dear hearts. Uh, part three in a series, 10 functions of your relational heartbeat. Today I'm going to talk to you about your heartbeat being the place where standards for right and wrong are formed. Standards, maybe this is something you've never really thought about before, but we all have a set of standards by which we live. And your heart is where you formed your standards for how to live right, whether you intentionally formed them or had no say in the matter while you were growing up. Your standards may include ideas about parental authority, gender roles in marriage, obedience and discipline of children, a focus on headship and submission, Bible knowledge and formal church attendance. And these are just broad areas of life, but your standards may also include a mix of other ideas for how to live for Christ that you picked up along the way of life. And you might even think that you follow your ideas out of love, but still sadly fall short of the fruit of what loving family relationships ought to look like. So you've been learning from my previous message about the 10 functions of a heartbeat that living out of your head in this way cuts you off from the workings of your conscience where the Holy Spirit wants to influence you about your standards for righteousness. He wants to show you the poor judgment you've had about your standards. Here's the great disconnect. Your set of standards is where you will experience a major breakdown in your relationship with God. This breakdown is a great disconnect of all, it's the biggest disconnect of all disconnects in your relationship with God. Standards is what makes you conscious of doing things right and wrong. And when you've got a set of substitute ideas, raised, then your conscience is set to respond to those standards and you think you're doing things right. And this is where you can really get into trouble. If you're following false standards, things won't turn out the way you had hoped and confusion results, not to mention a whole host of other negative actions and responses toward God and others. I can't even emphasize enough how um, common it is for Christians to be following a false set of standards. And if you are doing this, then you're missing out on God's instruction to you. You're missing out on his correction. You're missing out on the dealings of God in your life. And you're literally unconnected relationally from your Heavenly Father because you're trying to follow Him based on a false set of standards. And then you wonder why your prayers don't get answered, why things don't work out the way they should or the way you've been taught they should, why you don't experience the blessings and the promises of God in your life. And it's because of false standards. And so you can really get into trouble and it's very important that you learn what God's standards for righteousness actually are so that you can receive his work in your heart and then all the other things that the kingdom of God promises begin to open up possibilities for you. I have seen way too many confused Christians in my time because false standards actually make shipwreck of your faith because they never need anything from your heart. You see, false standards um, cause people to live out of their heads instead of out of their heart. They don't actually require you to grow up on the inside of yourself to know who you are in Christ, to come to trust his love for you and to love him in return instead of just living out of a life of duty. Your true identity remains lost to you and insecurity drives you to continue looking for something to put on the outside of your life to make you feel like you're living your life for God. And in living on this outside, you are preventing yourself from hearing the Lord's correction 
and instruction to your heart. You won't actually experience the fruit and success that you have hoped for if you don't allow him to educate your conscience to his standards for how to carry out relational exchanges and how to apply truth to your life. He wants to show you that any kind of fear-induced system for right living will compromise your conscience and your children's as well, leaving you completely ignorant of the inner workings of your heart. Do you know of selfish, unloving actions that you are regularly taking against your family members? Do you know if you're dis disciplining your children out of fear or out of anger? When you choose to continue in, in your unloving ways, you're actually clinging to your ways and your standards, thinking that you have good enough judgment for what is right and wrong. And when you choose to stop your unloving behaviors and unloving inner responses, you are rejecting your fleshly ways and standards and presenting yourself to learn from God's instruction to your conscience through the Holy Spirit about his ways of love. His standards are always love induced. Are your children readily accepting your standards? When you tell them of what is unloving and wrong, do they readily accept your standard? God wants to challenge your set of standards for living the Christian life. If your children aren't accepting yours, there's a reason for that. Are you accepting God's standards? He wants to re-educate your conscience so you can begin to serve his standard for righteousness, which is love from a pure heart, a good, clear conscience, and a sincere, unfeigned faith. In Matthew 22, verses 37 to 40, we see the law of love. This is God's standard. It is a powerful tool to carry out two practical purposes in us, to know ourselves and to know Him. And here in Romans 3, 20, uh, God tells us for the real function of the law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin, not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin, which works toward repentance, faith, and holy character. And so you see, God's law of love it is supposed to function in such a way that it makes us recognize and be conscious of our sin. Not just a perception of it, but an actual getting to know how we sin which will work us toward repentance and trusting God, which is our faith, and develop holy character in us. You see, there's a whole process that God wants to take us through in becoming acquainted with how we sin so that he can work his love into our hearts. God wants you to become intimately with, familiar with keen insight about your particular ways of sinning so you can repent and he will continue to mercifully expose your self-centered ways by cutting away the heart of flesh to expose what is there and the bible calls this merciful act of grace circumcision and true circumcision is the circumcision of the heart by the spirit not by the fulfillment of the letter of the law. His praise is not from men, but from God. This is Romans 2.29. The circumcision of the Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that circumcises our heart, cuts away the flesh, and exposes to us what we really do. And God is showing the self-made, self-centered ways that you developed to please yourself and other people so that you will choose to reject sin, which is self-centeredness, and reject unlove from your life. He wants you to stop identifying with 
and following after your self-made substitutes of right living for him and identify with him as his child and willingly learn his standard of unself-centered love, how to love the people in your life. And so your conscience needs to be purified from the dead works of adopting false standards for living for God. And the scripture tells us that our conscience can be purified from dead works and lifeless observances to serve the ever-living God. That's in Hebrews 9.14 because Jesus shed his blood so that we can be purified. And those dead works are all the false substitute standards erected in your mind for how to live the Christian life. And you don't have to create any artificial system for how to live your life for him. What you need is to re-educate your conscience to a new standard for righteousness so that your conscience is reset to true north, and that is love, God's kind of love, his real standard for righteousness. To reset your conscience so it works for you again and so that you can cultivate hearing the Holy Spirit's influence, God will show your heart His law of love, His ways of doing and being right. So you can see the contrast and come to know yourself better even as you are getting to know Him. And as you become familiar with God's law of love, by engaging in a process of repentance, you are responding to God's standard and adopting it as the one that you want to follow. And your conscience will more easily respond to your new standards and God's work in your heart. So learning how to love much and well will form God's holy character within you and you no longer wish to identify with your old ways of relating and your self-made substitutes for righteousness and you reject unholy thoughts and you reject unholy habits in your life and your conscience is being reset to work for you instead of against you and your old ideas and your old ways of relating begin to fall off of your soul by the renewing of the spirit of your mind it's amazing but new identity in Christ is formed within us and we begin to experience increasingly more security as God's own adopted child because we've allowed him to parent us at the heart level. As time goes on, you hear his voice to you more and more clearly, and he challenges the quality of your morality every single day. And the next video message in this series of 10 functions of your heartbeat is your heartbeat is your moral compass. God is at work to show you the quality of your morality, where your moral compass is pointed, and he's pointing you toward holiness, true north, where he is. Dear hearts, what alternate activity have you engaged in to tell yourself that you're serving the Lord and that you are righteous? What sorts of standards have you been following? The Holy Spirit wants to expose and judge your error. Judge how you've been making poor judgments. Get to know what God's standard for true righteousness is and you won't go wrong. You will go right. Bye bye for now. Don't forget to love on those precious kiddos today. They're dear to the Lord.